Hi, I'm Scott. Welcome back to my shop. In today's video, we're going to make a bottle opener. This bottle opener's got a black palm handle, and it's got a metal part here that's uh, made out of stainless steel, made by stainless bottle stoppers. So if you want to see how I made this, stick around. Okay, before we jump into this project, let's take a look at the finished piece, right? So what we got is a bottle opener, and it's pretty basic shape, right? The handle's made out of the black palm, uh, and it's just an amazing looking wood, right? So let me get a little bit of a close up on that, right? That's just amazing looking wood, right? And technically not wood, right? Palm is, falls into the, uh, the grass family, um, so that's kind of funky, but uh, yeah, it's just a beautiful piece of wood. And um, I'm finished with a CA finish, Okay, so we'll talk about that a little bit later. And then the metal part here, made by stainless bottle stoppers. It features a flat top, so it will stand up. Okay, and, uh, you know, pretty much self-explanatory on the, uh, the bottle opener end of it, right? So this opener unscrews off the handle, so you can throw that in the dishwasher if need be. And, uh, you know, it screws into a little brass insert that we put inside, okay? just to make that uh, easier to use and so it won't strip the threads out. Here you see the various components that we're going to need to do our bottle opener, okay? So we'll start out with, you know, a piece of black palm, okay? And you can just see even in this, right? I mean, that grain's pretty amazing. It's just, uh, this wood's amazing stuff. It's just fun. It's hard to work with, um, but not super difficult, right? Um, but uh, yeah, technically black palm, the grass, right? So that's kind of cool. Um, so anyway, we're going to need a uh, brass insert. Okay, now this is really kind of optional. You don't actually have to use the brass insert. You could actually thread the wood. But uh, and to be honest, I think this brass insert makes the whole project a lot easier. Right? And uh, really doesn't add all that much to the cost. So you can see this piece is knurled. Okay, and the knurling, uh, we're going to epoxy this into the handle. And that knurling will help lock that into place. So that's just kind of awesome. Right? Uh, we're definitely going to need the, the metal part, right? So, from stainless bottle stoppers. Okay. And uh, this piece over here is um, my uh, mandrel. All right. So, mine screws onto my lathe, right? Uh, they have uh, mandrels that will um, fit into your Morse taper. Okay. Um, I prefer this uh, one that direct threads onto the spindle. Um, and this uh, mandrel is made by stainless bottle stoppers, and there's a little bit to a twist to this, and we'll talk about that a little bit later on. Okay, so the first step we're going to need to do is we're going to need to cut ourselves a turning blank out of this piece of black palm. Okay, here we are over at the bandsaw, and you can see I have the, uh, the blank here up on the bandsaw, and what we're going to have to first do is we're going to have to trim off one end, right? So when I buy these blanks, um, you know, the ends are sealed, and it's not always, you know, a, a nice even cut. So, just want to even that up. Um, so, let's do that. Okay, now that we got that end trimmed off and nice and squared up, right, I'm going to need about a four-inch piece for our blank. And you can see I got, like, a little makeshift fence on here with some markings, right? So, what I'm going to do is, is I'm just going to flip this over and line this up with the four-inch mark for me, right? and then just cut a piece. Okay, so here we are back at the lathe, right? I got my chuck installed on the lathe, and what I'm gonna do is, is I'm just gonna mount this piece into the chuck. Um, I'm gonna line up the corners with the gaps in the jaws, and that's kinda what I generally do. You don't have to do it that way. Uh, you could line it up so the corners fit on the, um, um, you know, just a regular part of the jaws. Uh, I put it in the corners. I think it's a little bit more secure, right? Um, but, you know, do whatever works best for your chuck, right? There's several different ways you can mount this. So we're going to just mount this piece up on the lathe for the next step, which is going to be drilling a hole into the top for the little brass insert. Here you see I have my drill chuck installed into the tailstock, right? I have a Forstner bit on here. This is a half inch Forstner bit. That's the size I need, you know, that will uh, match up with this. Wow, let me go pick that up. 
Okay, so that'll match up with this uh, knurled uh, brass insert that we're going to install. So we need to drill a hole, you know, as deep as uh, this insert is, maybe just a little bit deeper. I don't know if you can see it on the camera or not, but I got a little mark on my Forstner bit that I put on here with the Sharpie, and that'll, I'll use that as my depth gauge. Okay, so now we're going to turn on the lathe and drill a hole. Okay, so you see we have our hole drilled here and I took an air compressor and I just blew the dust out of it. And you can see what I have here, right? I have the brass insert. It's just it's just barely threaded on to the actual um, bottle opener metal piece, right? So I'm just going to test fit this to make sure it sits just below the surface. All right, so I'm pushing it in. All right, it's a good fit. Okay, and then just screw that off. And you can see it sits just below the surface. Okay, for this step, you can see I left the, um, um, the blank in the chuck. I just pulled the chuck off the, uh, the lathe, and that's really just so um, it'll just basically stay in exactly the same position it was when I had it mounted, right? Because, you know, when you remount something on a lathe, sometimes it just throws it a little bit out of balance. So I don't want to deal with that, so I just left it installed, right? So I'm going to need the, uh, the metal piece and the brass insert, and once again, just barely thread it on, okay? And we're going to need some five-minute epoxy, okay? So we're going to mix up a little bit of five-minute epoxy, and then we're going to epoxy that piece into the uh, blank. Okay, now that I have this epoxy all, you know, mixed up, I got about five minutes of working time, which is plenty, to get this, uh, to get this done. So I'm going to just... Put a little bit of this inside the hole and just kind of work it around. All right, and this uh, stick I'm using is really just a, a tongue depressor, non sterile tongue depressor that I snapped in half. Okay, and after I get some on the inside, I'm going to take the, uh, the brass knurled um, insert and I'm going to spread a little bit of epoxy on mostly just the, like the the half that's going to be inserted first into the blank the epoxy will definitely spread as I put it in and I don't want to put too much in because I don't want to get any on the threads although if that happens there's always a way around that as well okay now that we have some epoxy on the inside and on the knurl of the brass insert I'm just going to push this in until it sits down below the surface I'm going to unscrew really carefully this metal part, try not to get any epoxy on it, and just pull that right out. And then I'm going to take just a small bit of paper towel and just wipe off this excess at the top. The reason I mix my epoxy on these um, notepads is, you know, once it cures, right, all I need to do is I can just pull off this one sheet and I'm ready to start over with a fresh piece the next time. This five minute epoxy has the five minute working time, but it's fully cured in an hour. So I'm gonna come back in about an hour and we'll finish this piece up. Okay, so here we are an hour later. You can see I got the uh, chuck back on the lathe, piece still in the chuck, okay? And the uh, epoxy's all cured and that um, brass insert cemented into place. So the next step for me is, is I'm going to actually um, um, Take some of this wood away here and just give myself a, just a little bit of a concave cut here. Um, and, and that'll become evident when we get it finished, but it's basically so when I screw the uh, metal piece on, you know, the, the wood actually will um, marry up exactly to the outside edge of that metal piece. Okay, you can see it was really just a slight slight uh, cut right um, just to uh, get down to the brass insert so I mean, technically this uh, outside edge is a little bit sticks out a little bit further than the center this is the mandrel I'm going to use for this project okay this is a direct thread uh, that will thread right onto my spindle so let's do that okay you can see that direct threads right onto the spindle 
Okay, so this mandrel is, you know, obviously there's uh, threads on here that actually match the same as that uh, brass bushing. So we'll be able to screw that right on here. But this, uh, this metal post here, I guess for lack of a better term, um, this metal post is not the right size uh, for the, you know, the metal component that we're going to be using. This post is the same um, diameter as this end of stainless bottle stoppers, you know, stainless honey dipper. Okay? So, if you screwed on a piece of wood and you turned it down to this size, then it would match up exactly with this honey dipper um, size here for this, you know, the metal end. All right? So, what stainless bottle stoppers did, instead of making a whole bunch of different mandrels, they kind of took something away from the pen turning community and decided to come up with bushings that fit on their mandrel. So this bushing is sized for the, um, the piece of metal that we're going to be using, right? The um, bottle opener. It's also the same size for the bottle stoppers. But stainless steel uh, bottle stoppers, right? I mean, this is like a kit. Let's see, I'll put this up here, right? And um, if, let me open this up real quick. You'll see that their kit comes with many different size bushings for many different types of projects that you can do for wood turning. So if you're turning handles and let's say that, you know, you're doing a pizza cutter or you're doing a fork or if you're doing, you know, an um, ice cream scoop or a multitude of other type of projects, uh, there's probably a bushing that you'll be able to put on here. Okay. And then um, there's a matching nylon washer so we don't actually cut into the bushing so let me screw that on real quick okay and now that is the right size so the end of the handle will match the exact size as the uh the metal end that we'll be screwing in okay so kind of an ingenious idea um and uh you know i really like that a lot i'll put a link in the description um so you can check that out if that interests you, okay? So now that we have that all mounted up, right, it, the next step would be to take the wood blank and we're gonna screw that right into the brass insert, okay? Put that on there nice and tight, okay? So now we have the blank mounted and then we're ready to go. The next step is for me to round the corners off of this blank and you can see I'm going to be turning this between centers and I'm going to be using a, uh, a live center. I have removed the center point. Okay, so I removed the center point so I don't leave the little divot um, or indentation in the blank from the center point so that way I won't have to turn it away later. Okay, so I'll just push this in, lock it down. All right. And tighten that up and now I'll be able to you know round off that and you can use whatever tool you like um, I'm going to use the skew Okay, now that we have the blank, you had the corners knocked off, we've got to kind of look at the shape, okay? And let me turn it around this way, because that's the way it will be, right? So, you know, the threads are on this end, right? So this is the shape I'm going for, and it's just a very basic shape. You can make the shape as ornate as you want, right? But I'm just going for a basic shape. I'm just going to let the wood kind of be the, uh, the highlight here and not, you know, the design. And, um, you know, that's pretty much it, right? So... Uh, I can do most of this with the skew, so I'm just going to keep going and uh, yeah, enjoy the music. Here I have the piece mostly shaped up and you can see there's just a little bit of a step here before the wood hits that nylon washer and I just wanted to point that out that what we want to do is is we actually want to get the wood to be at exactly the same level as that nylon washer is and that way when we screw the metal part on it'll just match up exactly the same diameter okay so 
We're just going to be a little bit careful here and just take this down so it matches up exactly with the nylon washer. Okay, now that I have the leading end here, the front of the handle, you know, meeting up with that nylon washer, I'm going to finish shaping this piece and I'm going to round over this back end here um, just to make it look nice. Uh, and I'm going to be doing that with a spindle gouge. Got that back of the handle shaped up pretty nice, uh, but I'm going to have to actually remove the tailstock so I can finish it up. Okay, there you can see I just did a, a couple very light passes um, just to smooth out any, you know, really um, irregular spots because I really want this just to go from, you know, thicker to thinner, just a nice taper, nice rounded end. And we got a pretty good um, um, shape on this for me. So um, I really should uh, note that these bl the black areas or the darker areas on this uh, blank are extremely hard um, and they're brittle and they're prone to chip out and you can see if I turn this around where there's more of the lighter area you can see it doesn't cut as clean. Um, a lot of this will be um, um, it'll go away during sanding but we might have to fill in some of these chips because uh, some of this um, it's just very, very soft, okay, and it, like powdery. So you can see the dust. I'll, I'll be able to use some of this dust to fill in some of those um, gaps. Here you can see I'm already set up to start sanding this piece. So I'm going to sand this piece up, and um, we'll come back once it's done. So I have this sanded down to uh, 120. Okay, so that's, you know, that was my initial grit. And just because uh, of the way that this palm is, and for, actually, I, I do this for a lot of other woods as well, right? Um, instead of sanding this all the way up to, um, let's say, 400 and then starting the finishing process, I'm actually going to start the finishing process right now. Okay, so... What I'm going to do is, is I'm going to soak this with some thin CA and let it soak into the softer parts of the blank, okay, and then sand that back to 120 and then move up from there, okay. I hope that makes sense, but that's what I'm going to do. You'll kind of see it on the video, so um, yeah, let's get going. So here you can see I have a bit of paper towel wadded up, okay, and that's just really going to be so I can spread the CA out. Here I got some thin CA glue, and I'm just going to put that on here and just basically coat this blank. I have a lace speed turned down fairly slow, okay, and just saturate that blank with some thin CA. Okay, now I'm just going to let that soak in and dry, and we'll come back when we're ready to go. After I soak this down with that uh, CA glue, um, I let that dry and then I sanded it down with 180 and after sanding it down with 180 there was a spot over here where I could feel there was just a little bit of chip out from um, you know this crazy grain pattern here. So what I did was is I you know as I was sanding right the sand or the sanding dust um, forms up you know right below where you're sanding right like you know kind of this right so I took some of that sanding dust and I just kind of put it over the area where the chip was I then used my finger to fill it in you know just kind of like that okay took some of the sanding dust and piled it back over top of where that chip was and soaked that down with some um, thin CA glue okay and after that was done, I just sanded it again with 180, and now this thing is 100% totally smooth, okay? And, you know, at this point, sanded to 180, all right? So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to sand this up to 400, but in between each sanding grit, I'll be taking some thin CA glue and soaking down the blank just like I did before, okay? So... 
it might be a little bit of an extra step, but to be honest, it really helped me um, cut down some of my finishing time a little bit later on. So let me just uh, take care of all that stuff and uh, we'll come back when I'm done. Okay, I have this handle sanded up to 400 now, right? And it came out really nice. Um, and to remove any circular scratch marks um, from, you know, sanding with the 400, I'm just going to kind of sand with the grain. But I, I don't see a lot of scratch marks at all. Maybe a few, but to make sure that we have zero, I'm just going to kind of sand with the grain. That way, any sanding marks will kind of blend in and disappear with the grain pattern. All right, I'm just sanding very lightly and rotating the, uh, the spindle by hand. I'm just going to use a paper towel and wipe that all off. Okay, so there we have it, right? The handle's now all ready for some final finishing. Okay, so just a quick review in case I didn't do a really good job explaining what I was doing, right? So... You know, I sanded from 120 up to 400, um, and in between grits, I saturated the blank, and it's still on the lathe here, right? I saturated the blank um, with some thin CA glue, okay? That helps stabilize the surface of the wood and helps use the, uh, the sanding dust to fill in um, any voids or nicks or whatever. Um, and now I have a really, really, really smooth uh, surface here um, for the final finish. Okay, and you know, we're going for, you know, the super shiny CA finish. So that's what we're going to work on next. Okay, so using that thin CA basically gave us a nice base finish. And you really could just leave this how it is, to be honest, and uh, just polish it up. But uh, I'm going to give it a little bit more protection. So I'll be using some medium CA glue. Okay, and some accelerator. All right, so I have this piece of paper towel and I have it all folded up into like a little pad right? I'm going to hold this back here so you can kind of see it. Oh, that won't work. There you go. Okay. And what I'm going to do is, is I am going to put some CA glue in a little puddle. And I usually count the drops out to about maybe eight. All right. So there's about eight drops of CA. I'm going to turn the lathe on a nice slow speed. All right. And I'm just going to wipe this on really quick. Okay, and just wipe it on. Okay, once it's wiped on, I'm not going to go back to it. I'm going to take some of the accelerator, okay, and I'm just going to spritz it on the blank. Okay, so now that we've given it a couple seconds, right, I mean, there still might be some wet accelerator on here, but this blank is now totally dry and ready for the next coat. All right, so once again, I'm going to take a few drops of CA, right? All right, and I'm going to wipe it on. Okay, and then give it a little spritz with some accelerator. Okay, for this step, I use these polishing pads. Now, I know it's hard to see um, in the bag, but here's what they look like. There's two sets here, okay? 
And I got these from Penn State Industries, and I'll put a link in the description, okay? But each pad has, you know, two sides. This one, you know, obviously orange and purple, okay? Um, and that will tell you what abrasive they are, okay? So this is the most abrasive, which is yellow, which we are not going to, which I'm not going to use. Okay, so I'm going to start with this green color, right? And you can see I have this is wet, so I have this dipped in some water, right? So we're going to be wet sanding um, to polish, okay? So I'm just going to do this to get it smooth, and I'm not putting a whole ton of pressure, right? I'm just feeling for any bumps, and once this gets smooth, I'll know I'm, it's time to move on to the next one. Okay, next up after the green is going to be the um, uh, the purple here. I'm sorry, the orange, right? And once again, same thing. I'm just going to feel along the blank and make sure that it's getting nice and smooth. And I can definitely feel the difference between each grit. Okay, and you can see there's this white buildup of slurry. Okay, that's the CA glue that's being removed. Okay, with each finer grit. All right. And just keep polishing it until... Uh, we're through all the grits. Next is purple. After the purple, we have this light blue color. And after the light blue, we just flip it over and we go to the final grit, which is gray. I'm gonna wipe off that piece with just a piece of dry paper towel. And let's take a look how we're doing. Right, so now we have a nice acrylic coating on our blank. Okay, next up I'm gonna be polishing up this uh, finish. I mean, it's pretty much, it's pretty good as it is, to be honest. But uh, I'm gonna polish it up and just get a little bit more out of it using this uh, I'm polishing wax at Triple E Ultra Shine. Once again, I got a folded up piece of paper towel and I'll just put some of this polishing wax on the paper towel. And we'll turn the lathe on and just start working this in. Okay, I'm sure you noticed I bumped up the lathe speed there halfway through. I went from about 500 to about 1200. And now that I got that all worked in, I'm just gonna take the paper towel and I'm gonna fold away the, uh, the part where they had the paste on and I'm just gonna use a dry section and buff that off. Okay, and just kicked it up another notch. Okay, so this step is totally optional, but I have the Beal buffing system, and this is the white diamond wheel, right? See, labeled white diamond, right? And um, there's already enough compound, white diamond compound on here, but that white diamond is an abrasive that's, you know, just, it's the next finer grit up from Tripoli, which is what was in that polishing compound that we used before, you know, the Tripoli um, Ultra Shine. So here I removed the mandrel from the lathe. I've left the handle I'm still attached, and I'm going to use the mandrel itself as a handle so I can polish, um, um, you know, the surface using the uh, buffing wheel. Okay, so I'm just going to turn this on, and this is going around like 1,200 RPMs, and just going to polish this up. Okay, so you can see after... Uh, Buffing that up, I mean, that really, really, really comes out nice. Okay, so here we are back over at the bandsaw, and I, I really like the height of this table. It makes it really easy for me to work. Um, so, but you can see I've unscrewed the handle off the mandrel, and I, I don't know if you can see it or not on video, but there's just a little bit of CA glue that sticks out past the end of the blank here, right, or the end of the handle. And what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to just chamfer that away using this piece of 320 sandpaper that I have sitting on the table. So I'm just going to take this and hold it at an angle and just rotate it. Okay, that should chamfer away any of that glue. Okay. And just to make sure I got it all right, I'm going to lay this flat and just a really, really lightly work this back and forth. 
Okay, so that should give us a nice flat edge here. Okay, and I might as well talk about this now, right? Remember we did this a little bit concave, right? So now, because we did cut that little bit of a concave cut, the outside rim of this actually extends out slightly past where the, um, the brass insert is. So when I take the piece of metal and screw it in, it'll fit 100% flush along that outside rim. So let's do that now. All right, so I've removed the sandpaper and here you can see our blank and here you can see our metal end. And I'll just screw that together real quick. All right. And now you can see how that fit nice and flush, right? No gaps, right? 100% uh, in line with the metal here. That's the nylon bushing, right? Made sure that we did that, right? And it just fits. The, the, the fit is really, really nice, right? The piece will stand up. Here, let me move it in here so you can see, right? Well, I guess that's just focusing on the top, so that's no good. So I'll just hold it like this, right? So, but you can see it's really came out really nice. Okay, so now we have a nice bottle opener, right? Um, made with a, uh, the metal end or the metal hardware from stainless bottle stoppers. And uh, yeah, I'll definitely put a link to their uh, website in the description. And um, yeah, handle made out of some black palm, right? Uh, it's just a really, really, really cool and unusual grain pattern on this wood. Uh, although not wood, right? Technically a grass. And uh, there's only one step left now is to test it and make sure it works. Okay, so another successful project, right? It's awesome, right? Here you go, prototype, right? Nice black palm bottle opener, some stainless steel hardware. And then we have, okay, prototype. And then we have completed project for today. So now we have two, right? So I know the prototype works because I've already tested it, right? So, but now the project opener, we got to make sure that it works. And today's selection will be, uh, let me see here. We got some new Belgium breweries, fat tire. Um, so you select the, uh, the beverage of your choice and, uh, let's see if we can get this to open, right? Success. <laughs> like there was any doubt, right? So, okay. So, um, Yay, thanks a lot for watching the, uh, the video. Um, if you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button. I really would appreciate that. It really helps me out. Uh, please subscribe to the channel. That also is awesome. And um, yeah, feel free to share the video with your friends. Uh, you know, I hope you had fun watching the project. I hope you have uh, um, some time to make your own bottle opener. Uh, they're great gifts, uh, great stocking stuffers around Christmas. Um, or just great gifts to hand out, you know, for parties during the summer. You know, you're going over there and, you know, you bring the six pack and, you know, you, you wind up giving the host a bottle opener. I guarantee they'll love it, right? So, hey, cheers. We'll see you next time in Scott's Mini Woodshop. Have a great day. Uh. All right. Sweet. Sweet. <laughs>